Yeah, it looks like we'll probably follow the Tai Chi guys, so go ahead and count it in. This is the track we'll use. Four, three, two, one. Give me a second. <laughs> started was as he tried all this stuff and it didn't work mm -hmm. and his mom asked him to go get something you know at the you know market mm -hmm. or whatever and he picked up a grease pencil and he wrote on the stone and then after he processed it the only thing that came out was what he wrote but that's the lore behind it if it's true or not I think so but because it sounds stupid enough to be true you know yeah so but uh so wherever, see when you draw on this, besides the fact that it's the mirror image, it'll look just like this. Mm -hmm. So, and you have different, like, uh, grease pencils and stuff, different hardnesses, just like regular pencils. And then, So is it an etching into the limestone, or is well, it just... Actually, what you do is, is you take a gum arabic and nitric acid mixture, mm -hmm. and you... Put it on here and it changes the chemical composition of the stone so it adsorbs the grease into the stone because okay. limestone's unique enough to where it will hold substance right like so wherever the gum is here see this will hold wherever there isn't any drawing right it'll hold water where the grease is it'll repel water so when you go to print it what you do is you get the whole thing wet where the grease is it's repelling the water mm -hmm. and then the water will hold in the stone so when you roll the ink roller over it that's oil based ink it's not going to stick where the water is got it okay so it works out pretty nice um, I don't know the washes come from where you have it's it's a tush it's a I can show you when we get in the shop but it's mm -hmm. gre basically grease and it you mix it with either water or different like uh, solvent washes have lithotene in it, then you have alcohol washes, all different kinds. Mm -hmm. And this one, these are all water washes, because I like these because you get what's called reticulation. It works on the surface tension right. of how, you know, it's like when things dry, you know, it'll be like this, and then all of a sudden it goes like that. Right. And it keeps doing that, and what happens is, is the grease sticks to where that outside circle of the water is, and so as it dries up, it goes like that, and it goes... Like that, and then you get that reticulation. Oh, I like it, <laughs> and I like it. Yeah. But what I did is I drew all this first, and then I came in and put some washes, like over the chimp, and threw some in his hair and beard and stuff, and on him mm -hmm. to tie it all together, and make sure it all works together. And then what I'll do is on this one, the way you work with it is, is I'll show you. You do your at first etch on it. Mm -hmm. and that gets it into the stone and you have to let that sit for at least an hour and then you wash that out and then you roll it up in ink and then you etch it again Okay. and that stabilizes it and then after that you can another hour you can wash it out and then you can print it okay. but what I'm going to do is, is on this one this is all this is going to stay the way it is but I'm going to have a color I'm going to have another stone mm -hmm. and I'll have a color back here Make sure you stir it up. And before you do that, you want to rosin your top it. And what the rosin does, what the rosin does is it protects the drawing. Mm -hmm. And then the talc cuts down the surface tension so you get an even edge. Okay. Honey suckers. Don't need too much. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about Darwin I like. Because so many people try to prove him wrong. You know? Yeah. It's just kind of common sense. still have this theory that all humans are just a biological experiment by aliens anyway. Then you can rub it in over the hole. 
old stone. And I like to do what's called bleed prints. Mm -hmm. That's where you don't have a border. Because I just, I have a hard time. I started to do a border on this sucker and I just didn't like it. So I have a hard time staying within the lines. I guess, I don't know. I don't like having that real sharp edge. Right. But plus this feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll just kind of work this in, loosen up this stuff. This is the old gum border. It's got grit stuff in it, so. But you can see where the wash is, since they're gum Arabic soluble in water. Mm -hmm. And so if you do water washes, you get stuff like this, which it works for me. They're like, I don't know, I like that where you have a little bit of the broken border. Okay, so what I'll do is kind of work this in a little bit over the whole stone, kind of working this all up. And then what you do is in these dry areas right here, see, I won't do anything to them. I'll just leave them the way they are. I won't etch them anymore. Mm -hmm. But in these medium drilling areas, I'll take it, stir it up a little bit more. If it fizzes, it's okay. But I'll take this and I'll put them in the medium areas. And be careful not to get too much in these real light areas because I don't want to. You can burn it out. You right. Can. And then what you do is you sponge that off. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come back with my hot etch, yeah, and I'll get the darkest areas. And I'll go ahead and put this, since this is a wash, I'm going to go ahead and put this all over this whole section back in here. Because if some of it burns out, I don't care. Because it's going to have a color behind it anyway. And I kind of like the randomness of all this stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can you can get it, you know, where you know it pretty good. But it's Stanley Hader, who was uh, back around the turn of the century. There was a group of printmakers. They started the LTA 17, mm -hmm. and Hader was kind of the lead of it. And they kind of brought back printmaking as an art, fine art, instead of just a commercial process oh. and um, he's got a quote that I love it's like if I knew what a print was going to look like when I s finished it I wouldn't bother starting it so I think I got that right that sounds right but you always sponge this off put it on and sponge it off and then I'll come back with a hot you do this three times last thing and what this do it does is it burns off it's making it opens up this the limestone to adsorb the grease so when you say you do it three times each bowl three times you do the the medium and the hot three times okay okay and the the eight drop the weak catch you just do it when you first start and then when you finish. Like when okay. I'm done with doing these, I'll do one more on these. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go with the weak etch over the whole thing. And if I etched it right, which we can find out later, it should look like this. If I didn't, it'll look like crap. And then I'll have to redraw into it again. Because I'm afraid it might burn some of that out. There's another etch you can do which is pretty neat actually. It doesn't work well with washes, mm -hmm. but it's a five drop etch, mm -hmm. but you rub that in for an hour. Oh wow. But the neat part is, is all these real delicate drawing, drawn parts, right. they come out perfect. Wow. Yeah. That's the neat part about that etch. 
So I think I did these three turns. Sponge all this off. Then I'll take my week again. Then I'll cover the whole stone again. You always want to cover the whole stone because see this will create a surface when when you're gonna ink it up, mm -hmm. which or when the after this, like after it sits for a while, you can come back in and the gum will. What you do is you wash out with lithotine, you get out the drawing material, right, and then you rub it up with asphaltum, which is grease, which is you know tar right. and what that does is it sticks to where you the grease is in the stone okay and this gum layer will protect the open stone from putting the grease on it and I just always like to work this in a little bit just to I don't think this turns out the way I drew it so it should these areas I'm a little bit it's one of those things too when you draw it you always have to remember you're drawing on something that has a value to it mm -hmm. so if you put it on white paper it's this will look a lot lighter lighter right mm -hmm. but I'm gonna go with buff paper on this one and I'll probably do it in a burn umber or something like that instead mm -hmm. of printing it black because I just don't want this right so right. intense you know so contrasting <laughs> Yeah, these are got some really nice washers in this sucker. I love this because you can even see the you know like the value changes in his coat. I didn't want it to be all solid black, which is nice because I'm gonna have some variation in there. And that's what I was hoping for when I put down the wash. Sometimes they end up looking darker than you think they're gonna be, but this one I think is gonna look really nice. I'm pretty happy with this image. Now, it kills me because a lot of art departments at universities, they're wanting to get rid of their printmaking because, mm -hmm. you know, they think prints, oh, it's a print. So you can print a computer, you know, on a printer. Right. And the thing is, it's nothing the same. I mean, it's not even remotely the same. Oh, well, you want to skim this down and get a really tight layer of gum across it. This way it's, but you're, you know, it's like, let's get rid of the art department. I mean, let's get rid of printmaking because we don't need it because we ain't got printers. But it's not the same. You yeah. know, I mean, it's, it's like them saying get rid of painting because, you know, you can print it. You can do it on a computer. What do you need to paint for? Right. And, I mean, because you can't get this any other way. I mean, it doesn't look like a drawing. It doesn't look like, you know, a painting. You can't do it. I mean, you can't get washes and stuff like that. And the nice part about a five drawing with that pencil yeah. is, man, you can get these beautiful values and they're so smooth. I don't know. It's just really nice. Can you tell I like this stuff? Yeah, no, and, and it's understandable too. I mean, it's I mean, an amazing it's just, image. I don't know. It's when just, it's finished, it's, it's a beautiful process. I don't know. It's just so neat. So I, this is lithotine. So I'll we'll start with this. And what is that doing? It's taking out the drawing material. Okay. So inks and things like so that. So the oh the grease pencil in the wash. Okay. Because we're gonna put this into ink. This is asphaltum. Same stuff that's out in Barney Lock, except what? Refine. What this does is it gives the ink something to stick to. It binds with the, the grease that's in there. Mm -hmm. See, I've taken all of it off the surface. So this puts it just back where it'll give the, like I said, the ink when you roll the roller over it, it'll give it, help it stick to the drawn image. 
it smells like a roof. Yeah. up to where it looks the way you want it to look. Mm -hmm. Got some scummy. Which isn't so good. I think it could have been. That would be one. Trying to decide. See now what I want to do is look at it. And I'm trying to decide if I want to roll it up anymore. And I'm thinking I probably won't. The only problem is it's a little fuzzy through here. Mm -hmm. Which is because the egg was too soft when it was rolling. Right. And printing. It's so it can stop. I'm not gonna do any more. It just got darker. But it's working okay. So now what we'll do is I'll clean up these outside areas here. Mm-hmm. And then I'll do my do an etch just like we just did. It's a little darker than I wanted it because there was too much ink on the rollers. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is, is then we'll go ahead and do it. It's called a wet washout. Normally you don't have to do this. But I won't do it anyway. But you do because you get the sucker wet. Because I don't like the fuzziness in his face. Right. do is just take all the ink off. That's pretty cool. Because what I'm doing, like I said, I'm getting rid of mm -hmm. all the old ink that was on there. Get some more water. Which is the main thing with this is you gotta make sure it stays wet. Because if it gets dry, what happens is, is that it'll stick to the stone. Uh -huh. And you don't want that. I'm going to use another roller instead of the one I used. And I think it should come out more what I want. Yeah, it's better. 
See how it's rolling up slower this time? Right. So I got more control. More detail. Yeah. That's why I wanted to go ahead and do that because I lost. I didn't really lose anything. It was just because the. See, I'll stop here because now this looks the way it's supposed to. Right. And you can see all this again. Mm -hmm. And you can see his arm and everything else. So that's all working good. This is that grading that Julie was talking about that they had to clean. Oh, right. smaller. Yeah, it's you want to be careful because the thing is you can take out way too much. Right. And this is just a little piece of, of the limestone, right? Yeah. It's broken stone. Mm -hmm. But the nice part is, too, is then I can come back in and counter etch it mm -hmm. and redraw into it, which I'll have to do. Mm -hmm. But it's better than it being too dark. And that's, this is why I like working with the stones instead of working with the, the plates. Right. Because you can do this on a plate, you can't. And the neat part is, is sometimes you get stuff like this in here mm -hmm. that I might just, I'll probably just leave, you know, just because it has a really nice look to it. But that's what I always try to tell the students is don't, if something messes up, don't, you know, freak out about it. Just kind of, it adds a lot more depth to it. Yeah. And you can't get that. I still got to come back in and work on this. And this here, see, this is working good through here because that that'll be nice. But this is a little nasty. I mean, if I wanted to, I could grain out whole sections of this thing and totally redraw it. But I want to also have a little bit of this there because then it ties in the washes that I did. Right. So it doesn't look like you have drawing and then wash. And it's okay if it has a little weirdness to it. Let's see, how you, you know. Yeah, the nice part is the only, most likely, the only part I'm going to draw back into is, I'll probably leave it, I like the way his face turned out, maybe a little bit in here I'll draw into, and then I'll draw into here, but this turned out, and maybe you draw a little bit of, you know, just right across in here, just a little, leaving mm -hmm. a lot of that, but it turned out. Cool. It worked. Yeah. So, and this added, see how much more depth this has now than oh, it yeah. had before? And like in here, it's, the light spots. it's got that stuff underneath that you, this is the only way you can get it, mm -hmm. is to kind of overdo it and then come back and grain it out. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this stuff where it kind of. 
do is called scummy. It's one thing I like printmaking too, because it's so much of it's from the commercial world that you have things like if you need to doll ink, uh -huh. you have to doll it. If you need to make it easier to wipe, you had easy wipe. Right, right. It's none of these real fancy, you know, like all kinds of different, you know. It, it, it's, it, it's not, you know, you don't have all the, I don't know, it's just, it is what it is, and it does what it says. You don't have any <laughs> uh, None of the pretense, all the function. Exactly. Yeah. Where, where we get upper and lower case, the terms upper and lower case lettering comes from the old type. Uh -huh. They kept the in capital the box. letters in upper case and the other ones in the lower case. Yeah. So. Yeah, I should have known better using that roller. He said it an extra step that they didn't have to do. But the nice part is, is the space came out the way I wanted it. This is looking really good. And just, I got rid of that hard line that was across there that I knew was going to happen. Because like I said, I was trying to incorporate the wash into it. And to make that work, you had to... It, it always creates a hard line, no matter what. So you just have to come back through and break it up. And then when I etch this, the next time I'm gonna etch these areas a little bit hotter, mm -hmm. and that'll keep them from coming back. It'll make it look like okay. I want it to look. It'll burn that grease that's in there, it'll burn that out. What this does, this is just citric acid. Mm -hmm. You mix it with a gallon of water. Mm -hmm. And what this does is it takes all the gum that's in the stone, takes it all out so you can draw back into it. If oh, okay. I drew into it now, it's some of it's got gum arabic in it, and it would resist the drawing material that goes on top of it. One thing about these is, is if you, like, if I ate some Fritos, uh -huh. came in here with my hand, they'd show up. The the, the oils from my finger, yeah. Right. yeah. So that's why I always stick this under there. Okay. Take care of it. Yeah, I mean, it's just drawn with a pencil. And the neat part about this five is that you can keep it really light. And it has a nice smooth quality to it. It's kind of amazing because I had always just assumed that you were engraving these things straight mm -hmm. out. Well, in the, in the intaglio, I do. See, that's yeah. where, well, actually, though, you, you draw them into the you put a acid resist ground uh -huh. on the plate and then you draw through that unless you are doing engraving which I do but um, that's what I it's like it's why I bounce back and forth between litho and intaglio because uh -huh. sometimes it's just nice to come back and just draw yeah um, you know it's like what you put on is what you get and, yeah, it's a much finer line. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, it's just a nice. Like I said, it, it's been a while since they've been doing intaglio for so long. They have it because they can do it at home, mm -hmm. so it's nice. But it's just nice to come in and draw. So I keep them in my office, and I just go in there, and, like in between classes, and draw. Is there any other limestone that, that works for this, or mm -hmm. are you pretty much just stuck with the Bavarian limestone? Just this. It's, really? it's got to be pure mm -hmm. limestone. There's one other uh, place you can get it, mm -hmm. limestone, but for some reason they won't let them make a quarry. Where, you, where is it? North Rim of the Grand Canyon. Oh. 
<laughs> really? Huh. I mean, and I'm, I'm glad they don't let them mine the limestone. Well, yeah. <laughs> So that's the rosin, right? Yeah. What's going on now? Except this time what I'm going to do is, last time I just went ahead and did the eight drop etch. Uh -huh. This time what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put just pure gum on it. Because it kind of helps protect some of these delicate areas that might have burned out a little. Yes, the more you work these suckers, the the more depth they get into them. And it, like this stuff, mm -hmm. like in his shoulder, in the back, and just even across his head and stuff, and in his beard. It's the only way you get it. Was that just the process, or is that it's you going back and adding more depth? Going back and just that, you know, when I grained it yesterday, right? When I took a little bit of stone and kind of grained a little bit out, mm -hmm. that's what does it, because you got that drawing underneath. And then you grain it out, and it all, it doesn't take all of it out. It just takes out enough, but it gives it this neat glow that you can't get any other way. That's great. There's a technique that you can do. It's reductive, mm -hmm. and it's, you make the whole thing black, and then you just grain out areas. Okay, and yeah, it's yeah. It's working, you know, in reverse. <coughs> this time, I'm just putting pure gum over the whole thing first. Uh huh. Because what that'll do is protect those really lightly drawn areas for when I put the 8-drop etch on it. Okay. It'll kind of dilute it a little bit. So did you not do this last time? Uh-uh. Okay. I forgot. I should have. I was talking to you. Sorry. That's okay. I... <laughs> no, I didn't think about it until after I'd already put the gum on there. Oh, yeah. Then I'm gonna put, now I'll go ahead and put the eight drop back on. See, this time I went with a, instead of yesterday I did 8, 16, and 20. Mm -hmm. Today I'm doing 8, 14, and 18. So I made them less acidic, so it's not going to be quite as mm -hmm. high. So it won't quite burn out as much, which would be a good thing. So the, this wash in the background, I'm not going to etch as hot either because 
I wanted to get rid of some of the stuff that was on it. So I let it go ahead and etch kind of hot yesterday, and it did pretty much what I want, which is nice. Because the trick is, is you want it to burn off some of the surface grease mm -hmm. so it doesn't spread, but you don't want to burn off so much that it won't hold the ink anymore. Because it's all working on that fine, delicate line between, it's kind of like porridge, you yeah. know, get it just right. It's just so far out though that it's the grease holding the ink mm -hmm. and not anything else. Yeah. It's See, now I'll go ahead and hit these spots of the hot because mm -hmm. they have gotten rid of stuff in there. And so I want it to go there. I do want it to go ahead and burn out a little because that'll take out some of that stuff I already added. I mean, that I got rid of. Sorry, one more time with this guy. I love this stuff. It's so nice. Got some really nice articulation in there. And again, if I don't screw this up, I'm gonna proof it up later. I've done that three times right now. Mm -hmm. So they drop back over the whole thing. This time I'm going to rub it in a little bit longer. But sometimes just doing this kind of helps the action a little better, the etching there. Kind of helps to dilute the stronger etchings. But this is looking really good. Do it right. It looks great. But see, that graining, see, gets you this richness. Mm -hmm. And it's neat because you can sit there and, I mean, that looks like a shoulder. And if you, it's you're just you're pushing down on the rock. It's kind of like you're drawing with the rock. That's crazy. So. Then we'll do one more etch. See if I didn't screw it up. And then we can proof it. Normally, you just do two etches, uh -huh. and then you can print it. But because I did those changes to it, right. That's why you do another one. Also, I like to do three whenever I have washes, because it does help keep them from filling in. And yeah, I guess you want as little water on this as possible, as far as when you roll it up. Mm -hmm. you get these sponges in here, they're starting to fall apart. And it's just what you want to work on a real thin layer of water. sponge while I roll. Yeah, I think most people would be surprised at how little ink it takes, too. Yeah, you know, it's probably, I might need to 
mix up some because this is a little thin. Mm -hmm. But I want it to roll up slow so I have control over it. This much, <laughs> you know, I can't tell you how to set it, I just tell you how to feel. Set it in. Yeah, change it. Right through. Should be right, and it is. That's what you want as we. Wow, that's good. As we roll this up, this should get darker. If it doesn't, we got a problem. Okay. So hopefully it will. Now yeah, this is starting to come up now. This is getting more <coughs> than what I want. Because when it goes over the color, the color is all going to be back in here, and the, everything. Yep, yeah, it's getting better. Cool. Well, it's especially like in through here and stuff. Which university? I think it's Northern Arizona University at NAU. Northern Arizona University. At where? Northern Arizona University. Wait, wait. But One more time? Where was that? Northern Arizona University. And that would be where? In Flagstaff, Arizona. Ah. And it's what? Northern Arizona University. <laughs> and what are you doing now? Uh, Working where? At Northern Arizona University. <laughs> and I'd see like um, Rembrandt's etchings. Right. But I didn't know what the hell an etching was. And the first time I did a print, that was it. Nice. And the rest of the story, you know the rest of the story, as they That's say. And it ends up right here. At NAU. At NAU. <laughs> <laughs>